So today there are three parts. In the first part, I will talk about some concepts for modularized uh, proof system. And uh, in the second part, I will talk about like how we are choosing proof system for our ZK rollups. And finally, I will conclude with some like you know your, your practical considerations when you are choosing this proof system. So now let's start with the modularized proof system. So when, when you want to generate proof for some computation, uh, the first thing you need to do is that you need to do some uh, optimization. So basically, like uh, normally people call that circuit, but but uh, more formal word is called a constraint system. And there are many different ways for this circuit optimization. Uh, to give you some example, for example, in R1CS. So assume that you have a huge circuit, and you you put all the wires as, as variables, and you lay out that as a vector, like from uh, like should be W1 to Wn, and then you lay out that all the witness as a vector. So the form of R1CS is that you can define the linear combination of those the, the vectors of your witness times the linear combination equal to a linear combination. So that's a form for R1, for one constraint in R1CS. So for example, you can access any any of those witness cells um, like using this linear combination. But the, the limitation is that you can only have one multiplication. So it's very good for, for some programs. For example, if you have multiple like large linear combinations, but with a few uh, like multiplication. And so this is one example. Like if you want to access like cell like uh, omega one, omega two, and omega n minus n minus two. And another example is that you can basically access any witness cells using this R1CS. Um, so this is like yeah, the form of R1CS. Another commonly used optimization is called Planck optimization. Basically, what you can do is that uh, you are not layouting all your witness as a vector, but instead you you lay out your witness in a table. Like for example, you you have like three three rows, uh, and then like what you can define is that you can define something which is more flexible. Like for example, you can define a a, a degree degree. Uh, degree two, degree three cost, uh, constraints. Like for example, you, you you access some cells and then you define those as a very specialized gates or specialized custom constraints. And uh, another thing you can define is that you can define some membership membership relationship. For example, this tuple belongs to uh, like two columns in the table. So using this, you can you can do like range proof really efficiently. For example, you can have a fifth column and you believe that you, you, you prove that this, this element belongs to that table. So that's another thing you can define. And the third thing you can define is some permutation. Like you define uh, like some cells are equal. And so why this is useful? Because that in the first uh, custom gate, when you are defining, after defining multiple gates, you need to connect them together. So you need this permutation to, like for example, define uh, the, the first gate's output equal to the second base gate's input. So those are three constraints you can define in a Planckish optimization. So it's custom gate, lookup, and permutation. So from the modularized perspective, uh, there are three, like, Commonly used front end one is RNCS as I mentioned, like with which relies on linear combination, and second is Planckish, which relies on custom gates, lookup, and permutation, and third is AIR, which is used in, in Stark. It basically contains like transition constraint, uh, which is very similar to custom gates, but but it only has access two rows, and also some boundary constraints for like defining your 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 starting point. So that's that's the front end for for, for a proof system, and uh, after you get this constraint system, uh, when you need to get a really you know implementable uh, proving system, like in, in practice, you also need to pass it through an informational theoretical uh, compiler. So what does this mean? So this compiler will, will define some like interaction model between a prover and a verifier. So in this information theoretical compiler, you only define how the prover and the verifier are, are interacting. And assuming that there is some oracle where you can, for example, prover send a message to some oracle, and then verifier can like later query from this oracle. So there are nothing like, you know, concrete, for example, the, what kind of commitment you are using. So you just send some message to the oracle, oracle and the verifier can query. So that's what happened in this information theoretical compiler. And uh, so this is an example for interactive oracle proof and the short, short form is IOP. And another example which is commonly used is called polynomial IOP, which the message is in the form of a polynomial. Like for example, you use a P1X to represent your message. And then like what the verifier can do is that during the query stage, uh, stage it can query at a random point to get this evaluation. And you also do some interaction between the prover and the verifier. You can do multiple rounds, like which is a, like for example, there is a constant round polynomial IOP, which for example, Planck is using that, like Martin is using that, a lot of like uh, stink, uh, a lot of proof system with stink verification, uh, you are using this constant constant round polynomial IOP. And then after you get this IOP, uh, 
to make that really practical, uh, you also need some cryptographic compiler to compile down to an argument, which you know can be implemented in practice. So uh, I will give you an example. So that's it. So in this polynomial IOP like model, uh, one one pre crypto uh, uh, graphic compiler you can you can you can do it that because they are it's, it's interactive and you need verifier to send a challenge every time to the to the prover. So what you can do is that you can initiate this challenge model using some fair shamir and you just hash the uh, transcript to, uh, as the, the next round uh, challenge. So that's what one thing you can do. And another thing is that when you are because there is still a like magical oracle there where you are sending this polynomial to and verifier can query from right. So you need to initiate. What's happening here, so you initiate the concrete polynomial coming scheme to replace this oracle. So for example, there is the KDG, and there, there is Firebase, there is Dory, there is Dark, there are many polynomial commitment schemes. So you just use those schemes to commit to a polynomial and later at a, open at a random point. So that's, you know, after those, those, those stages, you finally get your, your protocol. So just as a summary, for commonly used uh, zero proof system, you have front end and you have back end. So on the front end, uh, you have RNCS, Plunkish, and Air. And on the back end, you usually use polynomial IOP plus a polynomial community scheme. And uh, uh, a quick summary for the advantage between those different front ends. So RNCS is really good for linear combination. Uh, like why I'm saying this, I'm, I'm specifically talking about Grow16. Because in, in, for example, in you know, Marlin or Spartan or some other back end which also supports RNCS, it, it's totally different because it, the, the complexity actually relies on the sparsity for your, for your matrix. So which is a different, like, you know, uh, like form for, for, for evaluating the, the, the efficiency. And it's also more general because each constraint, constraint can access any witness cell, like you do linear combination for that. You don't need permutation because you know, all the witnesses have already been laid out to a, to a vector. Um, and uh, the Plunkish and Air stuff is more uh, useful for some uniform circuits. So uniform circuits are basically you have repeated structure and you can define one custom case, custom case for those repeated structure. You just need to increase the length of your execution trace and to, to really efficiently prove that. And it's also more customized. For example, you, ha you can have lookup, you can have variable like uh, components. So that's a front end difference. And the, on the back end, what really influences your, 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 your concrete property is that the, the polynomial convenience scheme you are using. For example, it will influence your trusted setup, whether you will have that, and some security assumption. And I will give some example later. And also influence your concrete prover efficiency, because like for example, if you are operating over group operation, it's, it's less efficient than some scale operation. And also proof size and the verifier efficiency. And uh, some commonly used uh, polynomial convenience for game is KDG, Firebase, and some inner product argument, which is derived from Bulletproof, and uh, another called multilinear PCS. So for KDG, if you in initiate your, your proof system with KDG, then you, you have universal setup, uh, you, you have D-log security assumption, and the prover is, is, is relatively slow, but, 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 but it's easy to parallel be because it's mostly doing some multi-scalar multiplication, and the verifier only needs to do pairing, and the proof size is really small. And for Firebase, you don't need trusted setup, and it's based on hash. You use the Merkle tree and the Resolman code to commit to a polynomial. Uh, but, but the tricky thing here is that when you are really using Fry in practice, you also have some other like parameter choice which will influence your practical security assumption. Um, and uh, Prura is mostly doing hashes and FFTs, and Verifier is doing hashes, and it has really large proof. But there are some improvements from, for example, Plunky2, which can make the proof really easy to, uh, to, to do recursion. And for, for the inner product argument, it doesn't have setup because it's derived from blur proof and it has D-log assumption and proof of verified are both doing multi-scalar multiplications. And you can use some technique like pasta curve where you have two cycles to, to make that uh, like easy to recurse. And you have like a middle size proof. And those are three polynomial commitments which are, we are commonly used for committing to a univariate polynomial. Like it's a, it only has one, one variable, but the, the degree might be high. And another interesting direction, which uh, at least blockchain people or in, like industry people haven't really looked into is called multilinear polynomial community scheme. So it's usually commonly used in some check-based constructions. So some check is basically, so this multilinear uh, polynomial community scheme is basically you have a polynomial, but you have n variables. And uh, you need to commit to this n variable polynomial and then open at n random points. And you can do some interaction to really reduce that to just one, one opening. So this is very useful for, for, for many like schemes, which I will introduce later. Um, and uh, so just to decompose some commonly used protocols, for example, like Kilo2 use Plunkish organization, Plunk IOP, and uh, use IP as polynomial community scheme, or the community version is using KDG. And so basically when you are describing a, 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 a concrete a protocol, you can 
like divide that into three three parts. What, what kind of optimization you are using? What kind of polynomial commissioning scheme you are using? What kind of like LP or uh, like the, the information theoretical model you are you are underlying? And Stark is using R and Stark LP and some some Fry use as this polynomial commissioning scheme. And uh, unfortunately, Grow 16 is is not falling into this gate, not falling into this category because it's basically based on some linear PCP, which you you do some. Uh, like you, you, you encode some trapdoor in your set, trusted setup and do the query there. So it's a very special case. It's done for into this PCS modular uh, like diagram. And there are some new protocols, as I mentioned, like which is based on multilinear polynomial community scheme, which is showing more and more like potential. One is Spartan, which uses R1CS as a, the front end. It has its own IOP to handle this R1CS, and uh, the polynomial committee is IPA. So the good thing for Spartan is that the prover is only doing one large multi exponentiation. So um, you can use GPU to really make that faster because it doesn't need FFT, it doesn't need some other operations. So it's highly pilotable. And there's another new scheme called Breakdown. Uh, it's also R1CS based and uh, it's derived from linear time uh, in codeable code, which makes your poor time uh, complexity becomes linear. So it's linear to the scalar operation, it's not to group operation. And also another advantage of Breakdown is that you can use arbitrary field for your for your witness. So one thing, like even, even if you are using fry based one, you, you, you are only based on Merkle tree and hash because you use resolvement code because you, so, so you, you need to do FFTs a lot. So you have to choose your field, which is like has a large tool density to do in those FFTs. But breakdown can, using breakdown, you, you don't even like need to like limit your field to be like FFT friendly. And there is Hyperplunk, which is from Espresso, and they, they do this Plunkage optimization and Hyperplunk LP. And uh, you can use KDG or fry derived like multi-linear polynomial community scheme, which has some like potential. And uh, there is also Nova. And uh, so for Nova, like you, you can't actually uh, really fit into this IOP diagram. It's, it's RNCS based. Uh, it's really good for doing recursion. And when you're doing repeated computation, you can use Nova to do recursive really easily. Has some nice property there. But unfortunately, as you say, like th those multi-linear uh, polynomial community scheme are most only support RNCS front end. So we, which, that's why, like you know, Hyperplunk brings you this interesting property where you can define something more customized. Now, after talking about the, the proof system, let's look at, take a look at uh, what we are using in ZKROP. So the idea behind ZKROP is that you send all the transactions to one layer two prover. And this layer two prover will generate the proof and submit the proof on chain with some necessary data for verifying this proof. And uh, so the proof system really matters in ZKROP, right? Because your prover time, your prover cost, your proof size, all influence your, the money you are spending on each transaction and also verification cost, which, which influence your gas you are, you are spending. So um, now let's, take, uh, let's think about what proof system we, we should use for, for such a general purpose ZK up. So uh, as I mentioned, like you first need to, to know that what, what you are really proving, so what's, what, what computation you are, you are executing. So for general, general purpose, uh, like ZK you are uh, you are actually uh, executing the EVM execution logic. So you need to think of EVM as some type of uh, computation and you need to prove that. So to constrain this EVM virtual machine, you have multiple like uh, limitations. For example, you, your EVM word size is 256. Unless you use some ring-based structure, it will always be the non-native field. So you need some efficient range proof. And uh, there are some ZKM friendly opcodes, uh, which means you, you need some specialized circuits and then you to, because if you put everything in the same circuit, it will be huge with a large requirement for the memory and for, for the machine you are using. So you need to decompose the circuit into different types and you need to efficiently connect different components. And thirdly, that is a virtual machine circuit, so you need read and write efficiency, so you need some kind of efficient mapping from read and write. And also, like one last thing is that EVM is very different from static circuit you are using for, for, for some fixed program because the execution trace is dynamic. Like, because different transactions have different trace, right? It, it fill up this, this table, like even in the same position, it might have different opcodes you are, you are proving. So that's why like, you might need some like efficient on off selectors. So the first three drive us to your, your circuit animation have to support lookup because you know that you have efficient range proof there, you can connect circuit there, and also you can do this efficient mapping. And the last one drive you to some more uniform representation for a circuit. You are defining some IR in between to, for, the, for instructions and also select at some at the, at the point you want. So that's sort of the reason why
why like we have to use Plunkish optimization for or Stark based because they, they can also support something more customized. And uh, now let's take a look at the ZK EVM we are actually using. So in ZK EVM we have uh, like two layers. One layer is proving the EVM logic directly. For example, it contains EVM circuit to prove the state transition. It contains a RAM circuit to prove the read and write consistency, story circuit for state update, and other circuits, for example, ECDSC circuit for signature and some other circuits. And they are directly used for proving the EVM itself. And then because you result in so many proofs, so you have an aggregation layer which can aggregate multiple proofs and into one proof. So one way of thinking of how we are, how we are choosing the proof system, uh, it's actually two layer. So think about the requirement for the first layer. The first layer really need to be expressive because you need to express really large circuit. And uh, so that's why like you have to support custom gate, and look up more, uh, look up, look up tables, and also you, you have to use some hardware-friendly prover to lower your prover cost because you know your input computation will be the largest one. You you are directly handling EVM, EVM, not the the, the verification. So that's why, like you know, you need some hardware-friendly prover. By saying hardware-friendly, there are two things. One is parallelizable, and the second is low peak memory because you know if you have low peak memory, then you can run on very cheap machines. Um, and also the verification circuit is, is relatively small because you, you get so many proofs and you need to aggregate that in the second layer. And ideally, there should be transparent or universal setup because uh, you might add some new pre or add some new, new circuit to this existing diagram, which makes the, the, whole, the whole thing like, you know, if you are in thing, you have to do setup again and again. And so there are some promising candidates, for example, Plunky2, Circuit, and they are using Fry to do this, uh, like, really efficiently, uh, and uh, there is the Halo tool, but, but, but you know, for the KDG version, it's not that promising because, you know, although the, the, the verification size is very small, but it's on another field. So one, one potential is that you can still use the pasta curve for Halo 2 doing all the recursion for your ZK EVM and contain a lot of, like, prove a lot of computation, and then use something like a bridge to bridge this Halo 2 prover or verifier to your final verification. And there are some new IOPs without FFTs because FFT, you need a uh, like, large memory and uh, it's less parallelable. For example, there is hyperplunk, there are some new constructions which remove FFT in your PCS. And so that's, that's two promising candidates. And also there are some, some check-based protocol and uh, like by design, it doesn't have FFT. It only involves some group operations. So for example, Spartan, Virgo, and all those, those, those constructions or Nova. But unfortunately, they only support RNCS. So if one day they can support punky stuff, then like, you know, it, it will be more easy to use. And in the, in the second layer, uh, as I mentioned, like, because the requirement is actually uh, efficiently verification on EVM. So even if some Wi-Fi is, is efficient, if it's not on EVM, then it doesn't really make too much sense um, for, for ZK rollup. So, and also the, the second, uh, second is that you, you need to prove the verification circuit from the former layer, layer efficiently. For example, like if your former layer involves some non-native stuff, then your second layer is better to support some plunky stuff because you need some customized stuff to handle your verification circuit. And ideally, it's hardware friendly and ideally it's transparent or universal. I said ideally here just because it's not a very harsh requirement because your, the largest computation has already been done by the circuit first, first layer. And then like for the aggregation circuit, you need to do like smaller amount of computation. So that's why like maybe not the, uh, the, the big stuff. And so some promising candidates is that one is Grow16, which I think Harmin is already using in practice. And second choice is actually Plunk with very few columns. For example, we can configure that to be just one, odd, one advice column, one lookup, and one fi fixed column. It can be even sometimes even more efficient than Grow16. Like you, you use KDG or you use Flunk proposed by the Aztec team, which you, the trade-off is that you, using Flunk you might have a like, more efficient verifier than Grow16. But the trade-off is that you, you triple your proving time. And, uh, and also there is Kachak Fry, which uh, with, with a large code rate and which you, you have a smaller verification circuit and uh, you can, yeah, you, you can basically do verification easily. So this is like our, our construction. We, we choose the first layer to be Halo 2 and second layer also Halo 2, but the hash function uses is, is different because it has those nest properties. Uh, uh, since we are running a little bit out of time, I will just skip this slide. And uh, so it's just basically good performance with GPU prover and uh, the verification circuit is small in, since it's succinct. And the second layer is that, you know, because you need to prove for the first layers, uh, like verification, you need custom gate. And uh, so there are some future work we are like actually thinking of and I want to have some spec on is that we want to generalize this framework a bit. So uh, we believe that the front end, the end goal of the front end will be Halo 2 because it provides really flexibility for writing circuits. Like you have different rotations, you have different layout configurations. So we, we want to generalize this, this framework to, to support using the same Halo 2 front end, but support different polynomial IOPs. For example, like Herbert Plunk IOP, and for example, you can add Fry 
to the Halo 2. And also, the, like, we need to significantly improve the Halo 2 tooling support, like, because I heard a lot of complaints from developers who are really using Halo 2, like, you know, might be, there might be some DSL you need, and uh, the bug reporting is really poor, and other, like, you know, any feedback from, from developers who are really using that. And the one last slide, um, I will talk about some other considerations, even besides the efficiency for Prover and Verifier. So there are some concrete considerations here. First is your ecosystem. So if you are using a uh, zero proof to, to develop your application, one thing you need to, to think about is that whether it's compatible with existing libraries. So if you, for example, and uh, whether so, there are so many projects and gadgets implemented there, because for example, if you want to just build a simple application, if there are so many implement gadgets, you can directly use that, which can simplify your development process a lot. So that's what I mean by ecosystem. And second is implementation. So even if some pa new paper coming out with very, very nice complexity, you still need to think about what's the implementation and how long does that take. For example, like industry implementation is usually like more solid and with better performance and better security consumption, uh, like considerations than the academic one. And you also need to consider the best practice. Like for example, if you are running a benchmark, it, it shows really slow, but if you know from the algorithm side that it's very easy to parallel using GPU kernel, then it's not a big deal. And also there is license and audit, and uh, so if we can really standardize the, the, the framework for, for the proof system we're using, and we will have a very large community and even have the ASIC specifically for making this kind of proof system faster and making that really great. So I think that's, that's pretty much all I want to cover, and uh, thanks for, for having me here.